Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony North Easton and I hope you're all keeping well and warm because it has got a little bit chilly over the last couple of weeks. So we're almost halfway through the build series. We've completed the signal box and the water tower. And here's the next build, it's the Weybridge office and as you can see it's quite different to the other buildings on the layout as it's completely made of stone. Uh, not only that, it has a very unusual chimney breast and the roof is flat. Um, I only have a couple of photographs of this. Um, I'm not sure what type of windows were in the building, I'm going to have to ad-lib that one. Um, and as you can see, you can actually see the way bridge to the left there, that plate. And the other photograph is the photograph we have of this side, which I shall show you. Which is here shows you three windows and a door down that side and if we look closely at uh, this here there's no windows there at all so that's just a blank wall now I'd imagine around the other side there probably would have been a window at least so there's a couple of points I'm gonna have to just um, um, kind of make up as I, I go along but uh, I like this feature along this side here not necessarily the little short wall but the actual building itself so let's make a start so basically that's what it is a box with a chimney breast on the top um, as for the sizes well I managed to get some windows that's roughly the same size as the ones in the photograph um, as you can see we've, we've got the front of the building there uh, we've got that side so these two points here and here are what's in the photograph um, this is what's going to happen on the back wall and obviously the opposite wall to this is going to be blank so we're just going to have the one window on the opposite side so let's have a look at the windows and doors I'm going to use. These are the doors I'm using from Smart Models Laser Cut. You get six in a packet and they come in two parts. So you get the panel part which goes over the top of the main door frame and you just glue them together. I find super glue is the best glue for this. I've tried using contact glue but the plastic is so hard that uh, it, it don't like it. it. don't like it so that's what I've used. And uh, once they're glued together, I just trim a, a little bit off of each side, about a millimetre off each side. So that's the doors. The windows I'm using are from Realistic Scenery. And uh, I think they're going to fit in quite well with the building. So let's see what I am doing with those. And here are the windows out the packet. Uh, as you can see, I'm chopping out the top frame and then gluing the top half and the bottom half together just to make the windows slightly shorter so that's what I've done with the windows and with the doors I have painted them um, in the maroon red and if you look closely I have added some more plastic card to the top of the door um, which is uh, 1.5 5 by 1 millimeter plastic hard strip and I've just rounded it over slightly so I've got some sort of arch effect on the doors and then I've wrapped the door around in some 2 mil by 025 strip and if those doors on the left I made a batch of them doors for the station a while back but I, I never used them so it's nice to use some of these old doors up Anyway, um, so this door here will go down the side and the other door will go on the end of the building. And uh, 
yep you've guessed it I'm gonna make two of these and the ones on the left are for AD pulling what can I say about AD pulling um, he's been part of well my channel now for over five and a half years more or less from when we first started and um, and it's nice to uh, build a building for his appreciation um, and uh, check out his channel he's got some terrific stuff on his channel and he, he's helped me out uh, quite a few times over the years so let's get back to the build so like I said earlier all I'm, I'm doing is with these windows is just cutting the top section out before the curve of the window and then gluing them back together again it's quite straightforward what I'm doing now is just flatten off the ends with a sanding block I've tried to contact the glue but it just does not seem to work um, I know these are 3d printed windows um, and uh, I'll use a super glue to stick these together and once they're nice and flat just a little bit of super glue run it along that edge try and get the corners to line up just hold it for a couple of seconds make sure the window is nice and square there's a little bit of a gap in the joint there so what I'll do then is I use the contact the glue just to fill that in and that should just help make a smooth line when I come to paint it so here's all the dimensions and doors marked out on the card. Um, as you this card here, which is the end wall, I've taken an extra four millimeters off to allow that to sit inside the front and back walls. Um, the back wall here, I've just added one single window. And as we know, the other end wall has got no windows on whatsoever. So now I shall continue cutting these out. So there's one thing I've added here. I've added a one millimeter line along the bottom um, because I'm putting a base inside all four walls and this one one millimeter is just allowing me to put a step onto the base. Um, you'll see as we go along. We're looking at the photograph again and uh, the reason being this time is we need to try and match this stone course uh, that we have here and um, and I think what I have got is something rather rather close I'm using this Medcalf M0057 stone and it looks quite similar so now we have our kit in four pieces it's time to cover them in card. So we have cut our brick paper and it's the paper sheets I'm using from the Medcalf um, stone sets and um, there's one last thing we have to do and that's just to check to make sure that our windows are going to fit before we start gluing the papers on because we need at least a millimeter gap for the paper to fold inside um, 
of the walls, if you like. So, with all the checks done, all the bits cut, it's time to get sticking. The end wall sheets are 5mm bigger, and that's to allow for the card overlap. Basically, you just stick them on and make sure you've got equal gap either side. Hmm. One down. As I was gluing these on with the PVA wood glue, I noticed we have a large stone on the base and a half cut stone for the top so when you're gluing your sheets on just make sure that you have your paper the right way up when you're gluing these to your card um, so in my case I'm keeping the larger stones to the base and the half stones to the top right carry on gluing So like I said, keep the large stones to the bottom. Now these sheets have been cut exactly to size on the front and back walls because there's no overlap. The overlap is on the edge sheets or on the edge walls. If you get any excess PVA glue in the insides, just get a cotton bud and just rub the glue around it's worth doing because um, when you come to fold the paper around those little bits of PVA if you leave them in become rock hard and it'll hinder the sheet coming through when you decide to cut and fold. While waiting for the walls to dry, I thought I'd have a look at the actual way bridge itself and what would be the dimensions of the way bridge. So I've got a couple of trucks here. One's a national coal bolt truck, which you probably would have found in a coal yard anyway. And this is just an ordinary flatbed. Um, British Road Haulier Services and basically when you look at them the wheelbase is the same near enough so by having these here it's given me an indication of the size of the way bridge at this particular time nearer probably so let's take the overall dimensions of this truck from the tailgate to the hood if you like is roughly about 85 millimeters and from the actual tailgate here to the um, bonnet on this truck is roughly 90 millimeters and the building itself is 91 millimeters in width so we could almost make the base that for the building um, incorporate the actual weight bridge as well so that's what I'm planning to do so so before we start the basis I need a way bridge and um, I've just got this photograph off of the internet because um, all I'm interested in is a detail of the way bridge because it's not a hundred percent clear in the photographs I have of South Shields um, way bridge so this is just giving you an idea of what the texture looks like so we have the outer plate and then we have the way bridge bed and this is what I'm interested in so by using this as a guide I'll be able to copy this or replicate this onto 
this piece of paper here. And this is the sizes that I've come up with. So I have done my 5mm segments all the way through. So the next thing I want to do is just pick out a corner from there to about there. And what I'm going to do now is just score down hard with a pen to leave an imprint. Twice. Probably three times. Just to leave a really strong imprint. Then I'll move along to the next one. And then do the same. And then just keep going all the way through, like so. So as you can see, it's beginning to take shape. And if you remember how we set off originally by counting the down lines, which works out at roughly 40 mil, then we can start going across in the opposite direction which is roughly about 40 millimeters. So they're five mil segments, so you've got 10, 20, 30, 40. So now that I've done the patterns this way, there's only one thing left to do now, and that's to go across all of them on the five mil um, spacings. So we'll see how it looks. So as you can see, we've got some sort of um, pattern going on there, and uh, I think I'd accept that. It's made the paper quite wavy, um, so I'm not even sure if this is going to work. So now the actual card bases. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take my scalpel and just chamfer the edges to keep get it as thin as possible so when it does go on the layout then you'll be able to barely notice the edge of the card so I'm just taking it down a little bit and then what I'll do is I'll put some super glue along that edge and then I can sand it down even finer I just want to just take off the top layer of card so I can get down to the um, the softer part of the card if you like. And I can always paint that a concrete colour when it's done. So what I'll do now is I'll add the super glue. So while we're waiting for the glue to go off on the bases, I think it's time we can start um, cutting out for the doors and windows now. So what we're doing here, I'm just I'm just putting in a little bit of two mil card and I'm just marking a line inside the windows there, so we know how much to cut out, and that way you don't have too much card sticking out, and it's not. Uh, nice to look at if you decide to detail on the inside. So we've got 2mm there, 2mm there, and then we just draw roughly a 2mm radius across the top there. And then what we do then is we get our blade and we just score right along the bottom edge there. Starting from the corners, working to the center. And then we just follow the line straight back straight back to the radius then we'll do the radius without scoring the card if we can help it then I should just pop out and with that out we'll just score it there one in the middle and then there again and with that we can just push all the card or sheet in the inside like so. And that's ready to accept the window. We have moved on a little bit um, 
the windows seem to just push straight through um, because we left a gap, a millimeter gap all the way around and um, they, they seem to go st straight through okay um, before I fitted the glazing I just put a dab of super glue in each corner before I uh, fitted the glazing um, as for the doors the doors I didn't bother having the return flap on I just cut the cord out flush to the cutout and then just pop the doors in and then just super glued them on the inside before I put the glazing in so these are ready to go together now in rocket card glue to assemble these just by putting plenty in the corner there and then just hold it in place while the glue goes off just make sure I've got glue on both edges right, just hold it there and to check for square Now that our buildings are together, I've decided to stick it on the base just to have a look and um, I don't particularly like the way the wave bridge is obstructing the um, door so I've decided to make two new bases and when you put the truck onto the wave bridge it does not obstruct the door and I think it just looks a lot better right so I'm happy with that now and also what I've done as well is I've feathered the edges with a bit of sandpaper to get that nice fine edge because I'm going to try and blend it in with the road as best as I can so if you've got a nice chamfer there. You can always paint this up like concrete and try and blend it in. And I've also put super glue along that edge as well so that it doesn't feather up because over, the, over time it might feather up. Right, so now that we've got our bases I can now concentrate back on with the building. So the next thing is is our centre walls. I've got to put a dividing wall in the middle. And I have found some Medcalf doors. And what I've done is I've imprinted them with a pen and then painted over them. And as you can see the outline of where the door frames are and panels are has come through the paint so these will be cut out and then stuck onto the centre walls before the centre wall is glued into position so we'll just let these dry for a little bit in the meantime all I'm going to do now is just draw around the building and then that will leave an imprint and then what I'll do is We'll get some Metcalf paving and create a little pavement around there, uh, like what we've seen in the photograph. This photograph, you see, we've got a nice little paving which goes around the building there. So we're going to do that, although it's not on the original photograph or just can't basically see it but there is a slab or two there so that's what I'm going to do next I don't know if you can spot a difference but what I've done is I've cut a little tiny piece of Metcalf curbing and stuck it under the door hence why I've left a millimeter so if we take that off you can see a little bit of curbing all it is 
is this thin stuff you get with your mid calf paving. So the plan is now is to put some paving slabs all the way around the building now. So let's see how I get on. I have now added the mid calf paving along the edge of the wall there and I've put this radius curve in as well which is the um, edging and it's actually the curb stones you get with the mid calf kit. So all I'll do now is just follow that along to the edge and then stop it and then cut this off later on when it's dry. And I'm using some rocket car glue to put this in place because sometimes the the stickiness of the paving slabs doesn't adhere to the card because um, it tends to come off again. I have now completed all the paving around the building and it seems to be a quite a nice neat fit. Hardly any gaps which is good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick with the base and so I'm going to continue and finish this off. So the next step is to paint the road as close as I can to the colour that's on the layout. So I'm going back to my old masonry paint which is a grey and then what I'll do is I'll do the final touch of weathering when I um, come to offer it up onto the layout depending where it goes on the layout. So I'm just going to do the um, the grey road as it were. I want to just paint around the edges, mind. Just paint the edges as well. Okay, we'll let that dry and then we'll um, give it another coat. And this is the same paint I actually use on the roads and the masonry paint with a little bit of PVA. So we've left the paint to dry and what I've done is I've fine, put a fine pencil mark where the actual waybridge is going to go and I'm just going to apply some PVA wood glue roughly where the mark is and what we'll do is we'll just let this dry a little bit because I don't want it to be too wet just in case it creates any bubbles in the paper so we'll just let this dry for a little bit and then we'll apply the waybridge it's been about three minutes now and it still looks a little bit dumb so I'm just going to add the way bridge now. Just try and keep it at least four millimeters away from the edge and we'll just lie it nice and flat and hopefully we don't lose any of the imprint that we put on. Right we'll let that dry a little bit and then we'll paint it. So as you can see here I've uh, mixed up a few paints. I've got this like a reddish brown MAC 100 added with a bit of silver and a tiny touch of black and I get this lovely copper um, rustic look and I think I want to paint that onto the Waybridge and then afterwards try and just add a little amount of black to try and get this kind of colour. So we'll, we'll give it a go. And it looks like the imprint's coming through the paper which is good. As you can see, you can actually see the, the print coming through. The trick is with this is not to put too much paint on otherwise you'll 
hide all the little detail you're trying to achieve. As you can see. The paint's been dry for about half an hour now. Um, so the next thing I want to do is just add some um, black weathering powders and uh, I'm using these Tamiya weathering masterclass paints so basically I don't want to paint over the top of it again so by using these weathering powders it doesn't uh, overload it with paint and I should still be able to get those lines I shouldn't uh, lose the lines so I'm just uh, it seems to be working. As you can see. Got a bit close there. Yeah, as you can see it seems to be working. And then leave that for a little bit and then I'll go over with some white. After adding the black powder and then adding the white powder on the top to get this really grey, gringy look, um, it looked as though I was losing the imprint. So what I did was I've rounded the end of my bridle over and then as you can see I've scored the imprint back, as you can see, um, because I didn't want to lose all the effort that I put into keeping the texture of the weir bridge. So by scoring it got my imprint back and I tell you what I'm gonna leave it alone now I'm not gonna add any more paints to it um, I'm just gonna leave it as it is because I'm, I'm quite happy with that meanwhile back on the building I'm just adding the doors the doors have dried now that's the mid calf doors that I've uh, imprinted and then um, painted again so these are for the centre wall that is going to go on the inside. I thought I'd do it now while well, it's easy to do. That's one this side and one that side. And once that's dry, it's just a case of dropping that in there. I have now glued the centre walls in and the next thing I'm doing now is just tidying up these card edges just by using some of that concrete grey and it virtually hides the joint altogether now. One more corner. So with the edges done and the centre wall in, I think that's all we've got time for this week. Um, Hopefully next week I'll decide on the type of roof I'm going to have because as in the photograph it's a flat roof and uh, we should probably detail at least one of the rooms and put an LED in it. Um, hopefully that'll be it. But uh, I'm quite pleased with the way the Waybridge has come out. 
think I've got the effect I want there. So I think that's all from me this week. Happy modelling everybody. Until next time, stay safe. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you.